I was just about to talk about Bob Ross, so. Whew. I was just about to talk about Bob Ross, so. I did charge you before I left. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Okay, no, my story involves Bob Ross. Yes. And um, a realization of my humble arrogance <laughs> because people um, with Bob Ross and that name, everyone knows it, Happy Trees. There are Halloween costumes of him, all this stuff. And I used to think when I'd see little snippets like, uh, him trying to teach people and half like what his paintings are, you know, this idea of high art versus just um, any ability. And and that is just um, a, a selfish, prideful thought sometimes because when you get really good at something as an artist, you want to hold tight and like it has to be the standard. Late, the last, I don't know, month or two, I've been starting to watch um, Bob Ross at night to help fall asleep because his voice is so soothing, so, so soothing. And the brush strokes. And the brush strokes. And there is 31 episodes, like 31 seasons that you can watch for free. And I was like, okay, we're going to jump what? in on like, we have a Roku. It's a yeah. It's, so if you go on Roku, but anyway, um, it's it, Tubi. It, it's available. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Freebie and Tubi. Um, yeah. uh, how we get there. But anyway, started to watch and realized he was an amazing person. And he actually, I have learned some techniques that I thought I was like, oh, I know how to paint. He's taught me techniques and just watching his passion and his excitement and his ability to truly create something um, beautiful in, in a half an hour. He, he does it in half an hour. And as he's talking, he's encouraging people. He's like, be confident, you know, enjoy what you're doing. Like you have this skill set. I'm going to teach you something like that. He's very just like a, an awesome cheerleader. He also has some fun phrases. It's not just about happy trees. Um, one of my favorite phrase of his is three hairs and some air because three it's a hairs three hairs and some air. It's because it went with a light brush touch to the canvas and just some, and then he, he also laughs every time he cleans his brush when he smacks it on the easel people like every single time, 31 like seasons, we've watched different ones. He's still laughing, which is fun. He, he's having joy, mm -hmm. truly joy in the painting, but he's also teaching something. And, um, it just, I, it made me realize that like, even if you don't go to, college or if you don't go and get a degree in art like picking up the brush your, your grandma picked up the brush and started playing and i want to say the word play because it truly is yeah. having a freedom with watercolors mm -hmm. and she kept pursuing it and now looking at the painting like it's, it's beautiful and there's skill to it and there's a technique to it that she learned through the process but that like to to pursue it and to keep doing it and and you can learn from um other people I think it's the fact that he taught and that people put the effort in mm -hmm. and worked hard. And so now they're, and he would make comments. It's been, well, he was doing these, um, these series years and years ago, but that like many people would then, he made the one comment pursued to go to our colleges and pursued this because they would watch him paint and would try. Our kids would send him photos and they would try. Yeah. And so the idea of trying, um, is I think really important in having that, um, just boldness to, to try something different. And if you're not good at painting, to then say, you know what, paint might not be my thing. But there are so many other types of art and craft skills that you could be amazing at. Even like our one class here is junk journaling, which is very similar to scrapbooking. Scrapbooking in the world of altered books and just making books and those things, that's an amazing skill. And there are tons of YouTube channels. There's tons of people that are doing that, showing others how to do it. And in my head, I might not think, oh, you're an artist because you can scrapbook. Totally are. Totally. It's changed my perspective, too, on, like, what art is. Mm -hmm. um, even just being here trying to create projects that are um, different. Because yeah. even though we love to paint, and I love to paint, I don't teach how to do a painting. Um, we try to use other materials mm -hmm. that people can be really good at glue and scissors and just organizing color and composition on a, a surface yeah. versus maybe drawing or painting. Well, that's what I really liked so. about poor starts and like yeah. what you guys are doing because in in the past couple of years I guess like ever since I was in college and like mm -hmm. out of college in my 20 young adult years now that I'm 30. They're so fun right the 20s. Years, the 20s yeah there during that time like the past 10 years I would say yeah. there was a big surge of paint nights and like yes. and wine and paints what are they called? painting with a twist yeah that's just that phrase paint and sips paint and sips like i thought it was a trend it hasn't gone away trends, like 
Well, I did it for my bachelorette party. Oh, nice. No, it's fun. <laughs> they they do look fun. Like here at Forest Arts. Yeah. You're like, art is more than just the paint and the brush. Like the, like you said, there's so many different other materials yes. and creative ways to yes. create. Yeah. And I love that you guys are showing and like and encouraging those different options of yeah. people to use as a creative outlet. We thought that that was because I'm a mixed media artist. And even what Jason does, we mm -hmm. thought that there are people out there that might enjoy doing something a little different. But really the last two plus years, it has solidified each kind of event we have. When we have someone come in and say, oh, I'm not art, I'm not creative, I'm not an artist, I'm not crafty, I'm not nothing. And they walk away with something really beautiful. Um, and truly their happiness is even more important to me than the project that they've created. And I've seen people really get excited about what they're making and getting really confident about what they're doing that like it's an attitude shift and that keeps pushing us towards these projects. I mean, um, the materials, the skills that they need to do with maybe our collage one or the junk journal, even string art. Um, we try not to make it difficult but we, because we want it accessible, but it's really about the attitude when people come in and they have a really good time and they get really excited about doing this and it seems like they're truly going to take it home and put it on the wall somewhere or give it to someone like yeah. that kind that it doesn't go and hide somewhere else that they're embarrassed by it but they've created something that's very individual too to them we give you this the materials but not an image you have to replicate mm -hmm. and i think that also gives people freedom to like make something they're very proud of because it's very personal and um it's also something that was from their mind that they're not having to compare it to anything yeah but um another a story towards that with our collage class we had a 14 I think she's 14 yeah a 14 year old participate in a larger event that we did mm -hmm. um and um she did the say with paper the collage one um it was all about dogs and we had a stencil that was a dog and she really loved it um and she goes to my um parents and sisters church so I got to I, I get to hear about her her life and her family a little bit and they're going through some really um difficult health issues with her father well, since that project, she loved it, has been making multiple of these mm -hmm. and um, has been collecting magazines. Her mom's asked, so I've given them some tips. I'm like, get this glue. You can get paneled canvas. You don't have to get the wood or just where to get surfaces. And she's been making them for like family, friends, for herself. And it's been a very therapeutic outlet for her processing um, some just really hard uh, news and things that her family's going through. But she's used this specific project that I gave her with collage um, as a way to be handling things. And so I know art therapy and just that whole um, concept is really important. People use that. But to have something that I actually, an idea and project I've created, like someone's still doing that and still pursuing it and it's bringing them um, relief, uh, it keeps us going too, because that's exciting. That's the idea that someone does this again outside of our walls. I would love for people to, to keep working on things, to do it again, even if you don't do it here. So. Yeah. And we're always trying to think of different kind of classes and projects too that like um that are unique that people can do, they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so Yeah. That was gonna be one of my questions is like what what was like the the feelings behind like the storefront? Like how do you, oh, yeah. you take like the the passion for your art right into like a storefront building right without it being like a a wine and paint. I know, yeah. But people yeah. can bring the wine if they want to, BYOB. But yeah, like how do we make it different? Because like, we're like, always trying to be different. Like obviously you you and Jason have been creative and yeah. been working in your careers. Yes. And from then, our home. No one from, from your home. <laughs> so like going from home to storefront, like that right. it sounds like people was yes. the big, was the big factor. Like yeah. how can we bring art to people? Yes. Yeah, that's even a interesting quick story in itself. I'll try to keep it simple. Um, but so let's see. So in 2019, we were just looking at our our jobs and looking at our life. And we were starting to get involved in like school and different stuff with our kids and realized that like Jason, it was mostly driven by his um, graphic design web development job and realized like he didn't have any local clients. Mm -hmm. Everything was out of state. Um, we didn't really know anyone in town. We're starting to get to know people, you know, families at our school, but we realized we live in Mannheim. We've been here 12 years, mm -hmm. um, almost 13, 14 now, and didn't really know our community and he needed work. And we realized we were in a position like he um, try to get some more local work or just more work or he might have to go to an agency. Can we still do this self-employed life? Yeah. 
Um, cause that's always a question that's in the back of your mind when you're self-employed, like when is it the line between we're not living at a means that's comfortable for us or what can we do or do we need to do more? Mm -hmm. So, um, I realized that I'd read somewhere about, you know, um, ch business chambers are important being part of a local business chamber. And I didn't know what that word or that term really meant. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I never needed to do that for my um, business. So I was, and I'm, I, again, I like people. I was like, well, no harm in asking, contacting. We have one in Mannheim. Yeah. And at that point there was a change happening even in Mannheim, the town. So we've also been really blessed that there's been a shift in just excitement in the town. And we came at a good time mm -hmm. to do that. Um, but I contacted them, had conversations. Um, there was a really wonderful um, couple that become friends with us and they saw what we do and how we're unique and asked, hey, have you ever thought of a brick and mortar? Mm -hmm. We've thought about it. I've always wanted a public art studio since the moment I graduated. Um, we've seen places like Goggle Works and other um, types of venues that do that. And we're like, but we can't do that. How do we do that? I don't, do we have something to offer? But just having someone, and that's also something important, having someone else see what you do is valuable and important. Oh, I'm gonna get emotional about that one. Anyway enough to have a space to pursue um ooh. you know it's personal yeah. you get emotional sorry no i mean um, i can i can i for me that was you guys like oh we're all caught together <laughs> like yeah like you guys um, obviously we did yeah. video stuff together a lot. Yeah, and yeah. I just remember I attended a Manhattan <clears throat> adults or something here yeah. in your space, and Jason was like, you should just join the chamber. Yeah. I was like, yeah, why don't I? <laughs> What's a chamber? Yeah, and I like, think, but like, any kind of thing. Yeah. Him saying that, like, I never thought about oh, yeah. doing anything like that or like getting connected, like yeah. believing in you. And you guys no. are always encouraged and, and yeah. always told everyone like if you need video stuff I know <laughs> we're always like 10 trails media 10 trails media but, um, it does make but it's true have someone in your corner yeah encouraging you being like yeah you, you can do this and they know what they were talking about and they weren't scared of the possibility of like us failing I mean there was this concept of like well what if this doesn't work out well, like to take a jump from like safety of our home to them being like oh wait to pursue this this involves money this involves time. This involves a whole shift of our family, but like, and it might not work, but it also could work. And so they believed in us. We started talking to other people and we just got to, it gave us a conversation too, between each other to say like, wait a second, like, can we do this? And I'm much more of the like, learn as you go, like, let's just go. And I can bulldoze. And Jason has taught me to maybe t pause and think about it. But also he is such a planner that I think sometimes I can light the fire underneath him to, to move because he can plan to the point that it'll never happen. And he'll say that. I'm not in trouble. He'll say that. <laughs> um, but that like my excitement at the concept mm -hmm. was like, let's do this. And he's like, OK, well, then how do we do this? But the fact that also we had been married at that point for a while and trusted each other enough to say like, OK, I see you're excited. So let's let's do this. And I would see him and like, OK, we can't sink everything and our whole life into this right now there has to be patience and time mm -hmm. but that um and then knowing that there were people around that can do this um we took that step and um it was a small step but it may have looked small to the the world around us but it was very big for our um life because we knew things could change and it changed for um so much good um so many crazy nights and long nights and like figuring out and learning even as our marriage and our kids like we've had different things that we've had to adapt and change with having um a building but like it was just a beautiful thing to get to see some of things passions that we've had to really um open up and so those going back to that question like why do we do these kind of classes or what kind of led us to there like well now we had a space and the other space was at first it was like okay it's going to be an office the clients can come talk to Jason and I'll have a studio and I'll get to work and people can come see my work and my artwork. And it was more of like the services. Um, but then we started to realize, well, we have this opportunity to host things that are different and we like different and we like to do outside the box stuff. And that part is never scared as um, being a little bit different and thinking outside the box. Um, so we're like, well, let's try some things out. Um, and then, uh, 
a shift happened in that things kind of took a pause in the world. We were just renting the space and um, the space, the, the owner needed um, someone to purchase it and we weren't the ones. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden we we're back home and this dream that finally, you know, like personally, I'll be personally, the dream that I was like, ah, I'm finally not just the artist at home. It felt like a professional step of like this just, uh, yeah, yeah, truly professional, like having a space, this other level that um, what I do is not a hobby, it's a career, mm -hmm. which no one has told me that. It was just that personal thought of like, now I'm, I'm a working woman, I got my own physical, you can come and do that. It paused, I'm like, oh, are we coming home again? I'm working from our home again. Mm -hmm. And like, um, that was hard to be like, well, did we just lose that dream? Was the dream taken away? Um, but it wasn't, it was um, a shift. And it really was this idea that no, maybe it has to change. And then this space um, truly wasn't even on the market. But again, um, people believing in us and believing in our vision and having the ability to make things move, um, there was an opportunity. And so um, when the world was quiet and trying to deal with that, we were able to come in here, see the space, get another vision, yeah. move in, and then open in 2020 of October just down the street and people are like wait what and like they're like didn't where are you around I'm like yes literally down the street beautiful building and another company is there now and they do um amazing things and what they're doing but like the um the blessing of this space even how many years in realizing this actually was better for us um teaches a story of patience again the dream of having a space and something like that honestly okay 2009 didn't have a physical space. It took 10 years, 2019. All right, now changed. This opportunity it took 2020. So we're talking, you know, sometimes those dreams, um, and I'm an impatient person. So this has really taught, um, my, my faith definitely guides me through this process. So I'm going to say like, God has taught me that like, it's a, that sometimes it's just not yet. The whole, you hear the yes, no, doors opening, doors closing, but sometimes it's just a, a wait, not yet. Mm -hmm. um, I We can be a story of that, the like, the not yet. And so getting involved now um, in the chamber and just other businesses and just realizing, and I've started going to like ladies networking events and that's just a whole fun new world of business women mm -hmm. just hanging, you know, connecting together. But seeing, starting to see other people um, and other businesses, even in our own town that had that they're taking that step. And all of them are moms, mm -hmm. which are really awesome. A lot of women that have waited and wanted a dream and it took them a while, but now they have a space. And it's really adding so much beauty and diversity to our town mm -hmm. that, um, and hopefully we can be an encouragement for those that like, it may be just not yet and to, to try something out and it might not work, but that's not scary. You don't have to be scared of, I don't even say failing, but just, you know, um, maybe it is failing in a different way. Art teaches you that you nothing is ruined, but things might have to change. Like for me, an art piece is never ruined. You can, it can always be altered, mm -hmm. but that like sometimes you, it, um, it needs to change. And so there's no mistakes. There are happy accidents. It is happy accidents, man, Bob Ross. It took me so long to find him. And now I'm like, oh, Bob, like really it's more of him talking to me as a person half the time than even the artwork well, art therapy it is art therapy it is happy accents you think and it can sound so cheesy but it's true that like change is okay accidents um could lead or just um those can lead to something really awesome mm -hmm. and it teaches you to mature and it teaches you to adapt and so and art is problem solving on like steroids i truly um a lot of times jason and i like we're we're making creative solutions to your artistic problems. Like mm -hmm. art is just about problem solving, problem solving constantly, whether visually or just other things, you're always trying to figure a solution out. And so um, that's, I think, a really important life lesson yeah. that people need to learn. So Good things take time. Yes, they do take time, but also to take that leap. I think if I, um, to not be scared to take the leap to try it mm -hmm. and to trust that like it's important to do that, and I mean, again, things could change and all of a sudden horse darts could look different. It could, um, 
I mean, I think we're going to be here for a while, mm -hmm. but that like you, your plans, again, your routine, everything, like, like a family, like you have to be ready to adapt and change it. You have to be ready to be flexible, ready. For flexible. Yes. Can throw at you. Yeah. And that, um, that can be exciting, but finding people that, um, kind of support your vision mm -hmm. financially is great. Um, practically is great too, but also those, just the words and the, and the encouragement are the ones that like see you're trying. So they offer babysitting or they offer dinner. I've had times when my mom will even call me and be like, Hey, can I order you guys pizza? Cause I know you have an event and you're tired and your week's been hard. Mm -hmm. Like that kind of stuff when people can love on you and, um, maybe it doesn't even apply to your business, but like it helps your family. Yeah. Then it gives you, um, relief to keep doing what you do well. Or just someone coming to like, hey, you know, can I, can I take your kids out to do something fun? Mm -hmm. So that you can work and you don't feel guilty that they're here because you don't have a place for them to go. So you're like, well, you're gonna be here with us guys. Like, well, they don't mind, but you just want them to also have a fun childhood too. Yeah. But yeah. There's a lot of talk and like the buzzword and like the young, yeah. young mom space is yeah. having your village and finding your village. <laughs> your tribe. Your no, tribe. Like, it's on every t-shirt you can find, but it's not a bad, it's just funny to me. Yeah, but there is also a, a, a lot of us who don't have a, a village or no. a tribe in the traditional sense of it being your family. Yeah. And there's a yeah. lot of, there, uh -huh. there has to be a lot of encouragement for young moms, new moms, that yes. you have to create your own village, yeah. you have to create your own space. And that doesn't have to mean family. It can be right. whoever you surround your, who, whoever you choose to surround yourself with yes. is your village, is yeah. your tribe. Your that neighbors. a huge difference. Yeah. Like people, um, both of our family, my family is about an hour away and we're small. Um, I don't have a lot of extended family. They even live close um, within that hour. Um, Jason's about half an hour, so that's not bad. But again, um, they get they get busy too like they have kids his siblings they have children they have schedules our in my in-laws are wonderful my parents are wonderful but they they might be working in there they give what they can but like um our family isn't just down the street to call up and be like hey can you come for five minutes because i need to go do something and i don't want that so yeah like and i've always kind of grown up in not a large family like that so you like your friends your parents families friends your neighbors your church your even other like, um, well, if you're self-employed, it's, it's different, but even like other employees in your company, mm -hmm. like they can become yeah, that friends, work friends. Yeah. yeah. They can become that, um, tribe, even my mom or dad's coworkers have become supportive and they'll like donate supplies my, um, to what we do. And like mm -hmm. they, I consider them part of the tribe, like the, um, businesses in town, the different connections you can go beyond. And we have gone beyond just referrals hey we support your business to like friends mm -hmm. like true friends and that can relate to you that you can call up and um i think for me it's been interesting trying to figure out how to find people because i'm a people person and i love friends but then i work but i want to have some ladies or um some couples um that we can call up just to have dinner or coffee mm -hmm. that like i can talk about a different aspect of life with and like trying to figure out what that looks like. And sometimes you have a lot, sometimes you don't um, have a lot and it's just a few, but even if you have one or two that you can connect to, that's important. Or even social, um, the social media mm -hmm. um, online world of community is an interesting one. And I think you can have some really deep relationships with sometimes people you don't even meet. Um, that supports you, that you can have conversations like um, about life and parenthood and business. But again, you haven't seen face to face, but you're having conversations with there yeah. and like a lot of online communities. And so um, having, I personally haven't gotten deep into those, but I've heard just a lot of wonderful stories of people that have. Yeah. So I think that's an important facet to remember too, that like so if you can't physically touch them, they can also be part of your tribe. A whole other space within social media of connecting right. with people that you can relate to and are going through the same thing. Yeah. I've definitely, I've met a couple of people like mm -hmm. met, like I haven't met them. But oh yeah. Yeah. We've connected because I, they were tagged it with a small business they were shopping at. I'm like, Oh yeah. my gosh. Like 
I love that small business too. Yeah. And then I click on their page and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're a mom like me. Yeah. Like, you can I, ask a question and you talk. Them and yeah. Like, yeah. There's that, just yeah. so many different, it's almost like a new form of word of mouth. Yes. On social media. Like, yeah. I call it word of mouth, even though it's yeah. not from your mouth. <laughs> just, you, you didn't shake their hand. You didn't give them a business card. You didn't have coffee with them. Mm -hmm. But like, you do get to know people. You can get to know someone's life pretty well if they're willing to, like what they share on there. And you can what gain saying. advice. Yeah. You can get wisdom from them. You can share wisdom with others. Um, and I think that um, that's something to not, to just write off as unimportant. Um, mm -hmm. I bet you figure out like you still need, I think it's still important to have physical interaction with people yeah. if you can. There are some people that just even health wise just can't. And so those online communities are really important for them. Or like if there's someone in another country or state and I, but I can, I can become deep relation with them and that happens. But you also make sure that you're like talking to people, meeting them, going out in community because mm -hmm. um, there's a different type of response and a different type of relationship you can make by reading a person, by having a physical conversation, by like engaging that way. Mm -hmm. But um, it's okay to have both. And I think sometimes society, well, I don't know, depends where you're looking. But certain generations believe in one more than the other. Yeah. And I'm like, let's not, and I just want, I don't like confrontation anyway. But I'm like, can we all just be friends? Like, but no, young I, people are like, you need to make, you need to meet people in real life. And the older generation, I'm like, no, just because it's on the computer doesn't mean that they're not real people. Yeah. Like, oh no, I definitely, whew. I grew up in that time where it's like, Internet danger, yes. stranger danger online. Yes. Don't chat with random people online. Yes. Like, like, that's what we were taught. Like yeah. growing up as the internet was like booming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. Because I, I think we're about the same age. And so we're like yeah. that. And, and, you know, I forget which generation I'm part of. Everyone makes fun of everything. But I'm like, it's not, you know, those mid 30s. We're kind of in a weird world of like we have access and we keep having more access. But it wasn't always that way. No. And so we do still realize, and we still have the older generation telling us, like, and that some of what they say is important on, like, how to handle yourself professionally and in a business setting, a little bit more formal about, like, dinners and things like that and how you do and how you network and how you go about doing business. I'm like, okay. I've, I've had um, an older person, somewhat of a mentor. Yeah kind of subtly make a comment about something that I had posted on social media not being like professionally appropriate. I'm like, I but I mean, it's relatable. Right, exactly. But like someone might relate to it and it doesn't yeah. always have to be about mm -hmm. presenting myself in a way to get clients or give business. Like, right. yeah. yeah, where's that? Where's the line between relatability and also, yeah, I guess professionalism. Just the concept of professionalism is probably yeah. changing a lot. But yeah, you had to be aware of that. But yeah, if that dictates how you do it, you you just go in circles. Well, I'm like, well, if it turns someone away, then it wasn't meant to be. Exactly. And if it really was a problem, and sometimes you have to see like, if it's one person complaining or if it's like 10 people complaining, then you're like, well, maybe if there's a bigger population, it's like, okay, let me think about that. But yeah. if it's one person, maybe having one opinion, you're like, all right, I can appreciate, I can hear it. Mm -hmm. But that might not, yeah. that might just be your I personality. Just, I don't know. Tensions right. It. And then it's always good intentions behind right. the advice. That's what yeah. I always tell myself, whether it's with business or with, because <laughs> I'm trying every, to be nice. got an opinion and has advice about motherhood too. And oh, being a parent. You but stop like, listening. It's sometimes. always, there's always good intentions behind every piece of advice. There's it's no, true. No one is ever ill intent being like, I'm going to tell them this piece of advice that yes. make them angry. Yeah. I don't, yeah, generally, especially if they're people that like you're knowing and stuff like that, there's not that evil intent, but mm -hmm. it could be just be coming from their experience or their personality or what works in their household mm -hmm. that actually doesn't work in your lifestyle at all yeah. but um it's good to keep that because sometimes um advice that people give you and the wisdom might not be for you anyway mm -hmm. it might be for the next person yep. so i try to make sure i'm always sharing what i know in hopes that maybe even if it wasn't applied to me it can now change someone else yeah um yeah. And weeding that out. So. Exactly. We had a C-section with our mm. baby. Yeah. And I did not make that public knowledge at all, which, like, is totally fine. Like, oh, yeah. you can always keep things private. Like, that you is true. You have to share totally everything. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay and, to protect your family if you need to. But I did find that, like, through, like, small conversations that I had with other new moms that were 
having giving birth around the yeah. same time as me within this past year and stuff yeah. that like I found that it was a way to connect or like let people know um like I went through this so yeah. like if you need someone to talk to yeah and so that's why I finally made one of my podcast episodes about our birth story yeah I saw I'm that like, yeah like some it might help someone to know that 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 happens yeah <laughs> it's a possibility mm -hmm. or like if you need someone to talk to yeah about that subject or like anything especially for moms it's good to know that yeah other people experience what you go through in life as well yeah yeah i think it is interesting there are certain topics in mom in momhood uh, motherhood that people want to know other mom of uh, women at first, I'm like, are you just being nosy? But it's like, no, actually, because they're going to me that you experience or relate it. And like mm -hmm. the birth story and like pregnancy symptoms, just the process of pregnancy, mm -hmm. you'll start getting so much advice or comments. But it's because it's something that um, I've experienced and I now want to share with you. Or I want to hear or you want to gain that or something that we common ground. But um and that's when a lot of times opinions and, you know, you have to be able to have that um, perspective to, to hear it and not take it personal. But yeah, that, the, the birth story, that some of those stories, um, the, um, your pregnancy process, even the first year and how you handle, mm -hmm. like, sleeping and eating and all those things, like, living. yeah, living, <laughs> um, people want to be a part of that. And so, um, and I think it is good to share because there's everyone has their own way of ex experience there are actual sometimes more black and white but there's a lot of gray mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of gray in in motherhood and parenthood that like you have to figure out what um what is your family's perspective and what's is truth and what's healthy mm -hmm. and what works and so it's good to share that part yeah yeah i yeah. think we also just live in a time where it's more and more like acceptable to just like not acceptable, but like it's more common for for us to be more open. Yeah, yeah. And talking about the nitty gritty stuff. Right. Um, I think that can be good. Yeah. I think sometimes it can be too much, and you, you sometimes you have to figure out if you're giving someone something that they really don't need to hear or need to know. There is sometimes now responsibility of information that's like. Ignorance is bliss when it comes to that. Like, there I didn't is, need to yeah, handle that. There's that balance because sometimes too much is too heavy. Knowledge, right? Especially when you have so much power to yeah. search for anything. Oh man, on the internet, WebMD. Ha sometimes I make jokes about like having to be the a doctor and I have no degree, and then you're always like, all right, now I need to figure out. Even with, when it comes to kids, like, are you sick? Do we need to do something about this? How about medicine? Like that kind of practice stuff where it's not my realm. It's not my world mm -hmm. and then you're like all right i'll go find advice i'll go find information like now there's too much i don't know what opinion or what to even listen to but um there's also i, I do appreciate that we're not stuffing as much as i think other generations of societies have like hiding hiding or just keeping things to yourselves yeah. and then it's just this lonely um battle Mm -hmm. and um and then especially women that i see in my life they're having to process and deal with trauma or just deal with hard things later in life mm -hmm. when there could have been some healing that happened early on and also when you get older um i think your perspective and you're tired and your body and sometimes even just the physical affects your emotional and literally you're tired so if you're having to process and handle some of these heavy things that happened to you years ago mm -hmm. It, it, it's a longer process to heal. And so I think if we can talk and share um, at the appropriate times and connect when we're younger, even the, you know, the 20 moms, the 30 moms, instead of having to, once our kids are gone or once things have passed, that, that time, that their lifetime period has passed and now we're just looking back when we can actually be getting advice in the moment or before the moment, mm -hmm. um, I think we're also saving our families from having to deal with and heal from things that they wouldn't maybe have to have dealt with. Yeah. Um, yeah, just as the adult child, now parent, sometimes adult grandchild, like, yeah, 
that place and trying to speak into women and even in your family that maybe you're now more on a peer level and just having to process things and wish that they had been able to do that mm -hmm. earlier in life mm -hmm. or that they're not having to heal through you even that they got to have that mm -hmm. so I'm glad that some things are, there's there's time and there's vulnerability is there that's important um, the vulnerability is happening not for attention that like you're actually um, maturing and healing it so yeah but that's a whole nother story <laughs> but yeah yeah but yeah no it's good it's good I think it's good that we're having conversations like this mm -hmm. um, cuz we got to get it out and sometimes our poor husbands get <laughs> all of it and they're like I don't think that way and not that men don't think like like the stereotype of like men and women think differently about like a negative but sometimes too just in my own marriage like my husband doesn't always think the way my mind is, especially relationally. And he's like, why are you stressing about this? Where's the anxiety? Like, I don't have another woman to go talk to about it. And so, like, sometimes you can't just make sure your spouse or the people in your home is processing everything with you. Like, it's good to have other people yeah. help you do it so that these people that you love 24-7 don't have to see every part of things that maybe it's not even good for that relationship. Yeah, definitely. Therapy is not a bad thing. Therapy is a great thing. Whether pay therapy or therapy at coffee shops with your friend that you're just being like, this is what I'm feeling and they're feeling it. And even just being able to have someone else say, I feel it too. You're not alone. You can take a breath and you can keep moving forward. Like you didn't have, they don't have to have a degree to fix your problem. Like just someone to talk to. Yeah. Or walk with. Women like to walk. This is what I've decided. Yes. We don't always have to sit in coffee. Like walking dates with friends mm -hmm. are very popular i don't think as much with men because i'll talk to them and they're like we don't go for walks to just talk like what are you talking about like yeah. you usually go sit and eat i'm like no no i'll call up a friend and be like you want to go for a walk and i do much better with walking oh yeah and talking uh, that's one thing i miss like <laughs> my, my family also lives farther away okay just and, enough that it's like you can't just get there in 10 minutes yeah well <sighs> it, it's like yeah definitely hours hours okay and so yeah like three hours so mm, that's I, hard that's the one thing that i and and envious of my sister and that lives up near home like yeah. being able to go out, out for a walk with my mom yeah and my sister like oh, yeah but it's so healing so therapeutic just to walk yeah. and talk i get that together Sometimes my sister and mom are 10 minutes away from each other and i'm like yeah. the hour again you can do a lot an hour but sometimes the hour it's not like just a random like tuesday night at six hey you want to go somewhere like oh, I, I, you know you have to think about schedule yeah and i'm like oh i wish i could just do that as much mm -hmm. but yeah that's important Telling the women, go for walks. Go, go for walks. With family and friends. Yeah. Like, They're, if you get a chance, go for yeah. it. And your kids can come involve them, too. Play days don't always have to happen at playgrounds. It's, you know, they can go for walks or they can go for rides. Yeah. Like, they can go to a coffee shop. Like, trying to teach them, too, that, like, play time, like, adult time's good. Women chatting. My kids are always like, Mom, you're always chatting. I'm like, yeah. And that's important for them to see it. Don't be afraid to be the person who yeah. initiates conversation. Yeah. Rip off the band-aid. Yeah. That's the one thing I've struggled with is being okay. that person who rips off the band-aid and says, let's hang out. Let's right. Do yeah. This. <laughs> like, yeah. So you don't feel like, oh, I'm, I'm inconveniencing them. Yeah. They don't have time for it or something. It's like, Get over no. the feelings of being a bother. Yes. Yes. I can relate. Especially I sometimes, I can, yeah. It's. In, it's in your head. You're, you're yeah. the one who's telling yourself that. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, no yeah. One, no one has told you that you're being a bother. That's true. You hadn't even tried. I know. <laughs> Introverts and extroverts actually struggle the same thing. Because in my head, I'm like, oh, is, is it an introverted thing? Like, I'm a bother. I'm like, no, even though I'm a more extroverted that I love to hang with people, I still have that desire, that feeling of like, I'm too much. I'm going to be the bother to always, I'm going to ask and ask. And I probably will try to initiate more, but you're just like, um, yeah, it's okay to ask. And also, if you're the one asking a lot too, don't get frustrated. Some days I'm like, I'm the only one asking. I'm like, but at least I'm asking. Mm -hmm. That's true. And maybe they do want to ask too. They just haven't thought of it or they're afraid to bother me. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be bothered and say no, I can't, than like no one bothering me. Because yeah. then, then you just like start questioning friendships. But yeah, Or just that kind of thing. Like, wait, maybe I don't have friends because no one's reaching out. They could be busy, but also when you get to a point, you're like, but, but people matter. I think too, like your to-do list tasks are important, but people in the end relationships are just as important. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to ask someone, even if they say they're busy, at least you're asking. And so that shows that you care about that person. 
um, that person feels cared for, even if they say no to you, that they feel like, oh, I was on their mind, like I matter, mm -hmm. and they want to see me. Mm -hmm. um, that's important. Yeah, sometimes I can struggle with the 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 self doubt of sending a text or just sending like a quick thing of like I'm thinking of you. Oh yeah, yeah. Feels not enough. It right. feels like it's not enough. It feels like I should be having coffee with you for two hours. Yeah. Then like I have to get years. over that and be like, my intentions behind it are pure. Like yeah. my intentions, like I just want them to know that they're thought of. Yeah. And that could be it. It doesn't have to be a whole novel text message. It can no. be something quick and it doesn't have to be something huge. <laughs> no, and it feels good to get that text. Feels really good because you might even, the person receiving it, might be having a hard day, might be having a moment, might be in just a thought that someone is smiling, thinking of you, that like they might be doubting their worth and who they are or just doubting a relationship and they feel like, again, back to momhood, they're like, I'm a terrible mom. Relationships are, you know, it's a hot mess at home. Mm -hmm. But to at least have um, a friend or family member then say, I'm thinking of you, you're like, okay, hold on. I'm not a total failure to every relationship I'm in. And, um, and I matter. And like, that's important. It can just change your perspective. So then you can take a deep breath mm -hmm. and then keep trying on maybe those day-to-day -day relationships that can be harder. Yeah. So. Especially when we can get so caught up of what's happening within our world inside our head. Yes. That, yeah. There are other people out there. The sun is shining outside. Yeah. Like, sometimes we have to get out of our own minds. Yeah. And how. I'm also though the kind of a little bit crazy person that talks to people at grocery stores. Not, it's not my fault. I think I've been trained because it's a it's a family trait and they'll be like i used to roll my eyes be like oh my goodness why are you telling her like you're telling her life story right now to the checkout counter lady what's happening right now um but i've realized i kind of become that person because i desire c connection mm -hmm. and sometimes those quick conversations with someone in a store even a stranger and to make them smile or to make them you know again being relatable like even if it's something as simple as uh, a joke about the the food or the weather or something like they could have had no one talk to them all day. Mm -hmm. Like I try to remember that, like there are people out, you know, maybe even shopping that like they go home alone. They don't talk to people. They might have really weird relationships. Yeah. Um, they might not have anyone just to talk to, um, and to be a person. And also someone wants to talk to me cause I also attract that kind of conversation. <laughs> The people, the probably the lonely ones in the store that come and just start telling me stories. I've had life stories in the middle of a CVS aisle. And I'm like, you know what? They needed just somebody to smile at them yeah. and feel like they can just unload this moment um, and then go back to their everyday. So um, it's a really good reminder to yeah. lift our heads up away from yes. us. Most of the time it's their phones, but like yeah. lifting our heads up from whatever it has our attention in the moment and yeah. making eye contact and smiling like you said yes and relating to a mom who has kids in that moment even if your kids aren't with you or if they are with you mm -hmm. um and not a negative because sometimes it's easy to complain like oh yeah I've like special but just like smiling and saying i see you mm -hmm. whether the child is having a good moment or they're throwing a fit like because half the time too as moms were embarrassed you get when mom, our child is falling apart be like i see you yes and i'm not judging yeah, you exactly and i'm not judging that your child is screaming on the floor because you know what they probably have had a hard day and they're having a hard day yeah that one those are special special moments when you get the eye contact that there's no judgment and they just care mm -hmm. or they come up and in, in a in a safe way try to talk to you or the child say hi or just make them smile mm -hmm. to help because you're falling apart mm -hmm. or you're just having uh, you're just, yeah, you're tired or it's, uh, your precious angel child was fine in the car, but now in public, they're not okay. Cause they're having a hard day too, or something happens and we just get embarrassed and it's like, yeah, that you don't want, or anybody, you don't want them to, you want them to feel that it's okay to be where they're at. And yeah. yeah, I think that's important. Always good things to remember. I hope I remember yeah. this when my sweet baby is falling apart. <laughs> falling apart. Or someone else's baby's falling apart and you're like, yeah. you got this mom. Oh. I've had those. Or like, oh, they're so sweet. Oh, they're so cute. I've had people say that. Or even if they're fine, but you're just feeling frustrated or you're just feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. because it can be hard sometimes when you have children grabbing things from shelves or they're doing fine or they're talking to you and you're trying to think about the price of eggs and you're trying to do this and you just want to like 
or you feel tense and you feel that and they come over like you have the sweetest kids you guys are doing great you're just doing a good job mom those are nice moments and i want to be that woman that does that mm -hmm. or the gentleman doesn't have to be a mom to mom if you see a dad or a grandparent or anyone in a place and you're 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 not being weird you're being safe because if you start i realize if you start telling other people just talk 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 you can make people uncomfortable but if you realize in that moment they, like they could really use that encouragement you feel the voice you know the little um touch and throw is like they say smile say something you know just like mm -hmm. make them feel good they need that um to do it like it can just change their um day it can change that five minutes but um i think especially moms because we're trying to do everything and if I'm grocery shopping, that's not the only thing on my to-do list. I have a long list of other things that also have to be happening, but right now I have to be at the store focus on this. But like, yeah, you can, um, that's important. Uh, we could talk forever. I don't we, even know. we really could talk forever. <laughs> These are the things I love. Art, family, and things I feel comfortable because I, that I've experienced those. Mm -hmm. The one thing that I felt very encouraged for, like, I, obviously, I'm diving into something new with doing this podcast and everything. I love it. The one thing that I felt really encouraged to do was to connect with other moms, but not just right. new moms like me who have are in the baby phase. Right. Like to connect with moms who are in the next phases. Who <laughs> made it out alive and their made kids it. are alive and happy they and they're out of the baby phase. Yes. And experiencing like the, the next couple of phases. What phase are we? I guess we're like the elementary. Yeah, you're in like the nice school age. We're the school age, school almost age. getting between, getting yeah. towards 10. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, getting just the different types of just understanding and yeah. revelation. But there's a lot of wisdom that you can yeah. gain from not only like moms who are going in the same phase as yeah. you, but like the moms who have been there. Oh, yeah. And Fine. Are yeah. In their own new stage. And you're adapting and learning to yeah. to that yeah i think it's very important if you're going to look at your circle again look at your tribe it needs to be diverse finding people that are, are in your life stage um because you can relate and even give more practical advice sometimes instead of the abstract concepts mm -hmm. or if like you're a new mom and you're asking a mom who hasn't had a baby in 10 years they don't remember things as much mm -hmm. so they can give you a little bit of general stuff but maybe not specific like here's an actual tip to help you for yeah. tomorrow here's you an need to yes. or yeah. like here's a product that like here's like help them sleep so you can get five minutes or, yeah. yeah so you need those that hopefully you can kind of relate to but if that's the only like you said the only friends and family that you're connecting to or people in your tribe that you're kind of missing out i mean for me i try to make sure they're they're people that are in my same stage of life that um older older moms the kids out of the house or just older moms that have teens um single women like also just women mm -hmm. that maybe don't don't have kids that also has that friend that so they can talk about different parts of your life mm -hmm. like those are usually the ones i talk more about the art mm -hmm. world with not that they don't want to hear about my kids but they don't relate so like that's just that fills a, a bucket in my um life that like is filling a need there that isn't always about parenthood Mm -hmm. um but yeah just finding people like grandparents nothing wrong it's it's fun hanging out older ladies they are a trip i i love women in their 60s and 70s they're a good time number one they think you're cute because you're like you know 30 or 40 years younger than them although starting the gap is starting to close in because i guess i'm getting closer to 40 than 20. Mm -hmm. um but they they see you as someone that you know that they can still sometimes take care of sometimes those are the women that more of like hey do you need a meal hey do you yeah. need this they see that you're struggling and their house is empty or their heart's different and now they want to take care of someone mm -hmm. there is no shame in being taken care of i'm coming to this place or that has like i yeah. have some grocery or i have random things in my home i don't use anymore hey do you or clothes mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff being willing to say yes to things you're not even to not be a bother when you say yes to things that people want to gift or give to you to help you. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that too. That's also in that whole bother world. Yes. Not bothering to talk to someone, but don't be feeling like you're bothered if someone wants to reach out to you and 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 love on you in a different type of way. Yes. To not say no. Um, but yeah, just having a more um, diverse tribe. You even have people that like. I wish sometimes even my tribe had more 
cultural diversity at times or more people in totally different upbringings mm -hmm. and stuff not that they're not but like everyone's life experience that can even add to you and just like what their family was or what their background is can affect their parenting can affect other skills can give you tips so yeah um that it's good to find people that you're like but uh, if you just create a world where it's, everyone's the same um you might be missing out on some stuff yeah you might be missing out on some huge life yes. advice that could change your perspective oh yeah or you change someone else yeah. i have to remember too that um and and this podcast is is helping because in the last few months like i sometimes don't think i'm in a position to have something to share with someone i'm not the one that can give advice i just will receive it i receive it receive it and i love it but like am i i've been able to experience and i have knowledge and maybe i have a, some um information that i can teach someone else and so that not only if someone can they can give me wisdom maybe i can actually help someone else um and be a um I'm trying to think of the word that jason Ross says no i can't think of it at the moment <laughs> basically not to be a master in your own but like if you have authority that sometimes you actually have an authority i have authority on certain um information and life experience that i've done like in the art world or certain parenting tips that if i have that, i can share it with someone else and you might have a place to talk and like it's worthwhile just keep talking really in the end <laughs> it's just like you never know what's going to happen when you talk to somebody or you talk about things yeah you never know don't be afraid to talk conversation's going to go yeah what needs to be heard or said yeah because sometimes you even need to be corrected and that helps with maturity too you might say the wrong thing mm -hmm. but if you just don't talk then maybe that you don't get to learn that you're thinking like you need to mature and adapt. It's okay. Yeah. So. Definitely. Sometimes I have to remind myself, even if I said the wrong thing, that like, oh, well, this is a learning experience. Yep. And that's okay. Yeah, people might think I'm, yeah. Every day we get a chance to, to start new. Right. In our minds. It all starts yes. with. Yeah. Our, within ourselves first, how we're going to. Yeah. Be that day. And now having kids, I want them to be confident, mature adults people of integrity and strength and maturity and so they're watching and um it's hard to teach someone to do something if you're not learning it either mm -hmm. you know they lead by you they learn by example yeah again that whole feeling thing so again they're not always listening to words but they might be just watching you watching. they're watching me talk they're watching this they're watching how we love people they're watching where we're putting our money mm -hmm. they're watching how we care for others and the questions we ask um about other people and if we want if so much society asks for good kind people the idea of kindness is so important right now um that's something that's also something you have to learn you can have a, a gentle spirit and a, a bent towards just being a kind person but kindness a lot of times is is getting rid of your selfish nature and thinking of others and you can't think of others if you don't do it and so i want to teach them by them seeing what kindness looks like it really is kindness as a mental muscle that we it have is. to practice in the same way that yeah. you talk about art, that is something you have to practice every day. It oh, yeah. Come naturally. Right. Oh, no. Honestly, it's easy to be selfish. It's all about me, and I want people to be kind to me, but to be kind to others, even kind to the hard relationships or kind in a hard moment, like that's true learning. And that's truly when your kids can see, when you're giving grace and mercy, when it's not easy, and kindness when it's not easy. Um, that's when you get to really grow. And I want, especially again, the idea of family as a legacy and what you do as a legacy. I want my kids to know me as a kind person to everybody, not just to the easy ones or kindness to someone who's not being kind back to us or me. Um, and again, that involves words and actions. And when you get into a public space in a public setting, like a business, you get, you get involved with different personalities and different situations that, again, it's easy to hide at home and, you know, find all the nice people and just have nice things. But when you're trying to interact with just society and community, mm -hmm. um, hard stuff can pop up. And then how do you act and how do you, um, what do you say, what do you do mm -hmm. um, is important. So that's something that, again, keep is just keep learning, yep. keep growing in it. Keep growing so, in it. Uh, uh, growing's hard. Growing's hard. Growing's hard. 
growing pains. I know, right? We always make say it's comments about other people growing, but then it's like, oh wait, when I have to, like, mm -hmm. and we expectation of like our kids need to grow and they need to learn and they need to be these amazing people and yeah, but they they got to learn how. Yeah. Like that's part of our role as a parent, teaching them how to be the amazing person they were meant that they are. Yeah. And so finding that. There's a book I read back when I was single. I know. It was, it's called, uh, what is it called? It's a, it's a book. It was a book about marriage. Oh, nice. It's always so, good to be learning about something you're not a part of. I, so single people I read do it, it when I was single, of yeah. course. But in the book, I honestly can't remember the title of the book, but That's right. there's so many it's books. about marriage. But yeah. the biggest takeaway that I got from that book that I still remember to this day was that when you're looking for a spouse, right? Um, you want to be looking for someone who is not a perfectly sculpted um, sculpture, mar marble or granite or whatever sculptures, stone sculpture. We'll go with marble. Marble's harder to carve. We'll marble. go marble. Yeah, marble so sculpture. You're, you're not looking for a perfect marble sculpture, right? Of a human. Yeah. You're not looking for that. You're looking for the block that is unfinished that you see yeah. God is chiseling away and yeah. in the process of creating that right. human being. Yeah. And you're you're seeing that person. You, you're seeing them go through the process of life. And, and yeah. same thing with you. Right. And um, you're looking for that and you're like, I want to be a part of your journey. Yeah. As well. And I want to be a part of the, those areas that God is working in your life. Yeah. And in the same way, like you are also that block of marble that I was going to say, chis God's working at different aspects of your life and you chiseling right. away, which can be painful. Right. Like, yeah. It's not easy. Like you said, to, to chisel or carve through. Oh marble. no, no, that's and not. So, yeah. But it's a process. You're not, you're, you're, you're the piece of artwork. You're not able to see the bigger right. picture. It just yeah. looks like. You, you have a perception of yeah. what you want. And that's the thing too. Like if you're looking for perfect, perfection, then you have to be careful that then you're not assuming that you're also perfect. I, I couldn't think that balance and think I'm looking for the perfect person. But if I'm the block that's being chiseled, like that comparison, it's just going to be heavy. I'd rather be working with someone that we're both getting worked on together mm -hmm. than putting someone on a pedestal of their perfection so that whenever they might fall, number one, we get thrown off. Or if they were to want to help us mature, then all of a sudden it's more painful because we're like, well, you're perfect, but I'm not. So of course you're going to say something like it becomes this weird thing. So let's yeah. find something because, because again, I am the block of clay, marble, everything that we're having to learn. And yeah, finding someone that's working together. And half the time, if you find someone who is presenting themselves as this marbled um, sculpture, that's not the whole person. Yeah, you get afraid that when they finally realize that, how much they're gonna crumble. Because when you finally do destroy a marble sculpture, you can put it back together, but it's hard. It's almost, and it also reminds me of this idea to always being willing to be adapting and changing and growing. Mm -hmm. That um, I think it's in the Asian culture, I don't remember what it's, that I, um, there's a term where like, when a, a piece of pottery breaks, they actually will fix the piece of pottery with liquid gold. Mm -hmm. I've seen and so, yeah, there's a term for it. And I can't think of it at the moment, but the idea is you now see the imperfections. They're not hiding it but they're using something precious and beautiful to fill those cracks. So when you see it, it actually adds to the peace and the interest. And so that, um, it, that every correction, everything that we go through, every maturing moment can be something that actually is beautiful and adds to our story. Mm -hmm. And that, um, like you're saying too, being vulnerable, if you hide it, um, it could take it away. And so I try to remind myself too, um, you have to look that up. I have to figure out what that word is. It's a yeah. whole term. I, I think it's Japanese culture. That. But yeah, yeah, the idea of like you fill it with gold. You fill it with something that's not even like it's precious. It actually, it's probably more worth than the the object that's broken. Mm -hmm. um, but and then it adds to its its worth and value. And so because you can't avoid trials, like honestly, like in in life there are good, hard, like all kinds of things in the mix. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's important to grow. Like talking about parenthood and everything, it yeah. made me realize like I also need to view 
like our baby, our child, not as this perfect, she is perfect, but like, oh yeah, yeah. She's a human. She's yes. going to grow up and have need, have issues, have trials, have growth. You get that more at the six and eight year old, yeah. the nine year old it's at my it. stage. <laughs> well, just my stage of realizing this expectation that my child, even though if I've told them something 20 times, to do, you know, a practical or like something to learn, like again, I can barely sometimes remember how to do something at 35 or remember to make the right choice. Mm -hmm. How to put this expectation on the eight year old or nine, you know, even the sixth all the way up to make the right choice and to, to not to be making mistakes when as an adult, it's something you have to learn. Like, yeah, as that parent, you got to give the idea of yeah, grace and that they're maturing. They're going to make mistakes. Um, big and small. Hopefully they are learning through the process. Yeah. You want them to be learning. But yeah, that they're just a block and they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And that it's okay if they've been one way as a young child and all of a sudden they start hitting a stage where it's like their personality to you has changed. It's not, but you're just starting to see that the weaknesses of just, you know, harder big decisions and the way they handle things and their emotions. And you're like, wait, they used to not, it, it felt easy when they were little. That's because their minds weren't comprehending some of these deeper things that have more emotions attached to them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it was easier just because they didn't have the ability to comprehend it. And now they can. And now you're like having to truly parent mm -hmm. more than just like, don't do that. But like, this is why. Mm -hmm. And you might not agree with it, but you yeah. have to trust me. You really feel like you're the one who's trying to make those chisels and make those sculptures, yeah. but really... You have to have yeah. that trust that yeah. in this in this example that God is oh, yeah. is the sculpture yeah. using your hands to help yeah. help shape their life. As a parent, you have a big responsibility, but you do not. You have to know when the responsibility is to, to step back and be like, you have not m change all their decisions. Like what they do too is still they're still a person and an individual and they will still be able to choose and have their own free, their own will. And so again, you can sculpt to so much and as a parent and where your boundaries are, but um, they might make choices even when they become adults. That's hard part too, when you sometimes see those parents where their adult children are making choices or doing different stuff and you're like, it feels different from what maybe you're how you parented them or it feels different from where they came or there's they're starting to share things and you're like how did that happen i should have guarded i should have been able to do this and it's like no you're not super human you have responsibility but also knowing how to like let go of that um you can't control everything in their life you can't control their personality and who they are um i think that can what leads to resentment from a child mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they feel like they don't get to be themselves mm -hmm. not giving them freedom to find out yes, who they are right but still don't knowing where that um appropriate healthy boundaries for them to learn about themselves at what age and what that we did a we had a parenting class at church it was really great um, um there was aspects which you know like well that's not going to apply to us but just the idea of like giving healthy boundaries and knowing what responsibilities are at a certain ages and how that handles and as you parent what it looks like and how hands-on are you at at the young age versus as you're supposed to slowly be pulling back mm -hmm. as they're getting older because you've given them the tools you've given them the wisdom you've given them what they need to so that they can be making healthy choices as they're getting older so you can be stepping back Mm -hmm. So that all of a sudden you're not trying to tell the teenager like all of a sudden all these rules because they, they're acting wild. Well, wh where was that balance as they're aging? Like you have a response for each time. So yeah. I try to remember that too. I'm just like, they can make mistakes. It's okay for them to be making mistakes. So, but what's my role and what's my responsibility to be invested in their life? Um, and so that when they get older, they can look back and be like, no, you did a great job. I'm like you were a good parent. Yeah. Like overall, I think, I'm even thinking now as this, adult parent, we need to make sure we're telling our parents if we had a healthy like childhood that they did a good job because <laughs> they're doubting. I do see that. Yeah. This is probably where I'll cry again. I'm going to be fine. That's, fine. That's a good PSA. PSA, tell, tell your mom and dad if you truly had a good and a healthy childhood, they need that. Mm -hmm. 
And even if it wasn't they need all good. Oh, no. Yeah, that's true. Be, be if you want a dangerous position. If yeah. You, if, if, even if you feel any sort of resentment or like negative feelings towards your childhood or things, take a, take a second to think like, find, yeah. find one positive. Oh yeah. Find one feeling or memory to reflect on. Yeah. Yeah. I know no one's, like you said, we're not perfect. We're, we're humans. Oh, yeah. We all make mistakes, even as parents. Yeah. Especially as parents. Oh, yeah. And now we're understanding that why they made mistakes. Taking the opportunity to appreciate that, like they tried somewhere. Human, yeah, we do the best with what we have in the moment. Yeah, and that some of the things why they did certain things was even out of their own hands, and this is what they could do in that moment at their ability. Like, if it wasn't perfect, and so yeah, I think that the good jobs that we give to strangers and the smiles um, are just as important to our own families too mm -hmm. and the other moms and those needing mentors but also like yeah giving back to them and so I think um seeing where like you appreciate it and where they did a good job and yeah being that parent now I can see mm -hmm. maybe why even like a, a parent they had an outburst like why my mom was so mad about this certain thing why'd she get upset or my dad get upset about this mm -hmm. number one now you know the per the situation if you are a parent and also like Maybe thinking about well, what was their childhood like too, and how are they were adapting, how are they learning it, mm -hmm. like, and then how did that like? It's just a, a grace, um, this idea of just being gentle to them, if if it's um, appropriate, because there are certain things too that like, you can also be a parent that parents differently, because you need to, because your childhood, and where you were wasn't healthy, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. But if there was a place that you can like encourage to not miss that moment to encourage and say thank you, mm -hmm. or like no, you did a good job. Taking a moment to reflect and yeah. appreciate. Yeah, we know how empty our tank can be when we feel like we're giving and we're still failing. So it's like, oh, <laughs> if you can even get that kind of that that um, yeah that beautiful moment, like oh, it's a little bit of healing to be like no. Take a moment to to refuel mm -hmm. the people in your hive. Yeah. That's the, my, that's oh, that's your I, buzzword. That's the buzzword I need to start using in the podcast. Not tribe. Hive. Not tribe, but your hive, your beehive. Yeah. Um, take a moment to refuel your hive. Bring in that, like, bring in some of that nectar. Yeah. From the, honey. From the from yeah, making making that honey to give to others, right? Yeah. Yes, I need to use all the bee things. Research a little bit more. All the bee, bee terms. I know. Like, Did you know that? Oh, actually, most of the worker bees are women. They're girl bees. Yeah. Hardworking lady bees. The, there's a lot of male bees in the hive that serve the queen, which is kind of hilarious. Because um, again, queen bee, she makes it go. But a lot of worker bees Those are, ladies are the lady bees. The hive running. Yeah. And nice. so both men and women, they work hard. But um, I think all... women are so relational that sometimes, what is it? I think. I've heard too, like men and women, like men have compartments and their minds are a little bit more like boxes. Mm -hmm. Women's are a bowl of spaghetti. Mm -hmm. So everything. everything connects to everything and every emotion and this situation makes me feel this way about this person and that person did this. And like, we're just a big bowl of spaghetti mm -hmm. and both get the job done. But like, there's just a lot more sometimes involved. So yeah, yeah, fill your hive. Honey is healing. I, I mean, think about that, especially this season with allergies and colds. Top things, read all the web. You probably know in the, the medical world, you read all the things. One of the healthiest things naturally at home is to find like local honey. Yeah. Get those local natural elements in your body to heal. You got a cough or you feeling something. Honey. My mama would get a big old spoon of honey and be like, swallow this. It was awful as a child. But now I'm like. Yep, honey, you eat it. Yeah. It's honey is good. It. <laughs> the coat, like honey and nectar, like it's healthy and good for your body. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't always taste super sweet, but like you add it to things. And so that's important. Oh, yeah. And also bees are super important to the way the world functions. We mm -hmm. keep saying about, we need the bees. Save the they, bees. Save the bees. Cause... It's been a huge component of my life, how it shaped my life. Because, well, I, I've mentioned it before, but growing up, when I was a child, like before kindergarten, my family called me Casey Suby. My middle name Sue, but like ah. Suby Honey, that's where the nickname came from. So ah. I thought my name was Casey Suby. I thought that was my full name. 
Hey, you write it out on paper to me. And they're like, what? Yeah, I... so that's where like the B kind of came from. And so oh. when I was pregnant, my dad started calling me Casey Mommy to B. So that's where the oh. whole B right. analogy came from. And bees are, they're so cute. There's bees on everything and they're so pretty. Bees and yellow is happy. Yellow. I know I'm wearing my color. Yellow okay. is a happy color. Yeah. And it's okay to be happy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we yeah. forget. Not in a generic, but like truly joyful and happy. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's okay to enjoy parenthood and workhood and not to always find, because a lot of times people want to like, they hear, oh, you're getting married. They'll tell you all the horrors of marriage. Oh, you're having a baby. baby. They tell you all the horrors of having children, mm -hmm. a business. Oh, you're going to have a business. All the horrors, because because people do relate on tragedy. It seems it's all common. Yeah. But like, it usually drives Jason and now me too. It's kind of crazy. Like, don't tell me the negative. It, it's important. But like that shouldn't be your driving story. Mm -hmm. Your your first advice out the gate should not be like it's gonna be hard and really hard and terrible or not. Just like get ready for it. It's like it should be. Tell about the joyful, joyful things. things. Yeah, like get excited. Like share the excitement about it because yeah. people are gonna need that. It's easy to get negative. Yeah, you can always give a hundred percent truth, yes. but also a hundred percent grace or a hundred percent joyfulness. So you can yeah. give. A nice balance of both. Kind of yeah, you don't have to lie that it's not going to be hard, but can, don't forget about the good stuff. Yeah. Because we always forget about the good stuff. So much easier to complain <laughs> than to, like, find good things. So. Yeah, that's always, that's really good advice. Yeah. Yeah, even if it's little bits. Like you said, even those little pieces like even, of yeah. honest truth. Yeah. If it's not honest, then don't tell them something to make someone just feel good because you might lead them in the wrong direction. Like, it's okay to, to, um, if you see something's happening that you might not like to give advice that might be a little bit hard to hear to the person, but again, like, it's still loving them. Mm -hmm. Truth and love. You gotta have both. Yeah. And your kids need it. Don't be fake. Don't be fake. All those fun t-shirts. Don't be fake. Kindness matters. Like, they're all real. Tough love. Yeah, tough love. They're all real. Yeah. But like, to actually live it out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we covered so much. Good I know. Stuff. Like, I, know. Oh, I think we've been talking for like two hours and it's great. <laughs> really? It's now, you know, I see a clock up there. I was like, oh man, nice. We didn't quite start at nine. We have one more minute until it's been two hours. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, well, we this is important. Very good stuff. Like, yeah, all, I don't even know what, how to like. You're going to have to edit all this. Good luck. I know, right? But yeah. maybe, like, that's the beauty of podcasts. It doesn't need heavy editing. It, that's it true. should feel... You have two hours to listen to her talk. Yeah. Maybe Watch her cry a little bit. Just a little bit of editing where we kind of had to make sure the laptop didn't die. We cough somewhere and cry when you're like, what's happening? Why is it quiet over there? No. No, because I get, I get very emotional about things that matter, so... Mm, yeah. If, that's I'm okay. Cryer, it's, man. it's important for us to to feel our feelings and, and yes someone said on a tiktok i was watching that he's they like, can be real he's like i don't let my friends cry alone i let them know that if they need to cry if just something's happening where they feel frustrated or something's happening in their life that they know that they can call me if that they just feel like they don't have to cry alone oh like, yes that is so huge i never thought of anything like that you need to know how to sit with someone in comfortable pain as they cry i think that nothing's harder there's so i want to say nothing crying with someone and then being embarrassed about crying because that person didn't know what to do or how to handle that mm -hmm. oh that's so much more painful even if it's good cry bad cry, whatever crying and that's it being able to be with someone when they cry like be that phone call where people feel safe enough to cry mm -hmm. and not be embarrassed about showing that emotion um, I want to be that person that someone calls because they're crying and I want to be comfortable in that, mm -hmm. um, feeling cause it's hard. Yeah. You don't like to see someone upset, especially if it's being upset. You don't like to see people in pain. You want to fix it. I'm a fixer. But like sometimes, honestly, if they just want to cry that you're there with the tissues, mm -hmm. you cry with them, yeah. where everyone's just crying together. Like, yes. and then because then they feel like a, a human, mm -hmm. you feel like a person. Yeah. When you're able to express yourself and it felt safe. Yes. Um, and your kids need to see you crying. Yes. Which I hope you know that when, yeah. you, when, <laughs> you, when, you, when you did have that moment in the middle of the podcast, yeah. that my first thought was tissues, but I was like, oh, I don't even know where they are. But then also my second thought was I wanted you to, obviously, I yeah. didn't want to interrupt 
your moment, yeah. how you felt, but I wanted to yeah. be able to express that. I also, in the, what we were talking about, yeah. related in yes. that, in that feeling. Yeah. Like what we were talking about with having someone be supportive of your child. Right. Yeah. Because tears are important to, to feel like that. Yeah. Obviously it was created in a way that our bodies would react that way when you're feeling. Yes. And you can't even stop it, man. Crying at songs, crying, talking about things. And I really, well, I can get going. I'll stop at this thought. I stop because I keep talking. Um, cause that's important too. Um, cause this whole, these last few years, my child, my children, especially my daughter, cause she's very much like me. They have seen a mom that has been pretty calm and the hard stuff won't welt to the surface. You can put on a face, especially when they're little, mm -hmm. to be happy and safe and you want them to be that. Last couple of years of just trials and life and stress and sometimes those tears, especially for me when I get frustrated, I cry. They come out more and it's okay for your kids to see you cry and have emotions um, and to know that that's still safe because especially with her, even him, um, I have a daughter and son. They don't always know what to do when I'm getting upset. So they'll get upset or they get scared. And I, I want, I'm trying to tell them like, no, it's okay. I'm, I'm feeling this. I want them to be okay with feeling and having frustrated tears, even though it's, it's hard sometimes. Apparently you want to fix or you want to stop them feeling it because they're like, don't cry because that means something's wrong. It's okay to cry, happy, good, uh, just being overwhelmed, like, to get that out and actually sometimes schools are starting to catch it because our counselor my daughter would say like no my, my the um she says it's uh the, not the counselor but just like they'll come and talk in class and mm -hmm. stuff and they're like no it's okay i'm all, allowed to feel these things that sometimes even remind me as an adult because i'm like oh calm down calm down they're like no sometimes they don't need that they just need to, you to hug them to talk about it um because i think as an adult i haven't always known what to do with upset tears are different things and I'm learning how to have to do that now mm -hmm. or even seeing my family or my parents when they get upset um even as an adult sometimes can unnerve me and I'm like they probably tried to be strong and didn't see it and I'm like I want not that they'd be I don't want to scare kid my children that something's so bad that they would feel unsafe but like it's okay it's okay to cry yeah it's okay to do that. And they need to know how to deal with someone who is crying at that moment. I want them to be compassionate. It is such a bizarre Ooh. shift when yeah. you go from seeing your parents in a different, from, yeah. a, from a child perspective to then seeing them as a human Yeah, with, with the, with the, with the big feelings, with the frustration, with the tears. When they call you and they're like needing just to talk to someone, mm -hmm. maybe on more of a peer level and you're like, Oh, what is this? And you're like giving them words and they're like appreciating your words and you're comforting them. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you're the parent, right? I'm just this little kid. Like, no, you actually have something to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Or family. Yeah. Just other family members, just like knowing how to be with people when they cry. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. This feels like a weird, really weird note to end. <laughs> it is. Now we need to just cut this, just put, split this into the beginning. Oh. Emotions are healthy. Let's end with that. And as a creative person who's very in tune with their emotions, and I can be driven by emotions at time, like emotions are good. So being authentic with joy, being, being authentic. authentic with your tears, being um, real and honest when you're feeling something and letting your family, because we're talking about momhood, parenthood, letting your family see those parts of you so you can talk about it mm -hmm. and work through it with yeah. them so that they can be really well-rounded because I want my kids to be parents when they grow up. Mm -hmm. I want to be a grandparent. I can't wait to be a grandparent because they get to just spoil their kids. That's what seems to happen. Yeah. You get to parenthood or grandparenthood and it's a whole nother world, um, which is exciting and they love it. And grandparents just use it like the joy that they get um, to see it. So I want my kids to have loved being in a healthy family that they then want to have families. So yeah. That's beautiful. There we go. Yeah. We've covered everything from family to business and how everything all intermingles together like a beautiful it does. spaghetti. Big bowl of spaghetti. Big bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. And there's just so many exciting things. It's spring, oh, yeah. It's springtime right now. Everything yeah. is buzzing outside. It's true. And plants and flowers everywhere. Yes. But I know you guys have a lot 
so much wonderful things happening oh, thank you. here in your yeah. space and also in your uh, new, new, right. new castle back there. Which My I'm new, really excited yes. to, to take a look at. She Shed Studio, Art Studio, Castle, but, who knows what, Maker Space. Yeah. Yeah. But do you want to let um, our watchers and listeners, once I eventually figure out how to do the listening part, you want to let people <laughs> know how they can yes. find you, how they connect, uh, connect yes. with you guys? Let no, and this is the important part, again, because Jason, my husband's always on the computer. He's like, people need to find us. Like, this is a good aspect. Yeah. Um, so we do, we have a website, um, horstarts.com. Tried to make a simple last name is Horst. Mm -hmm. Don't get too crazy. So you can go there and we'll put up our schedule of events, um, different things that we're doing, different projects. Even if you want to hire us for different projects that you have, um, you can go on to Facebook and Instagram. Horst Arts is our handles on those. Um, me personally, I have on Instagram and Facebook, K Horst Arts. So that's more my fine art world. And I try to post kind of separately there um, about what I'm doing and my kind of projects. Um, hopefully you can find my fine artwork, um, at Red Raven Art Gallery and in Lebanon, uh, Lebanon Picture Frame Gallery, but, um, and yeah, here in Mannheim. So if you see the sign that says open, um, please just walk in. We, and um, emailing us, horse starts. Um, you can do Catherine at horsestarts.com. Like I love conversation. We love to try to point people in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Even if we can't help you, um, we will try to find someone that can help you. Check yeah. it out. There might be some fun videos to see up on yes. there. Yes. All of our like videos about our workshops and classes were made by 10 Trails Media. So you make us look amazing. I truly mean that. I'm going to just, here we go. Just gonna, this is how we'll end. You're amazing. Um, what you create is amazing because you work hard at creating things that are just telling true stories that are beautiful, that show the skills that you have worked hard at. Um, and so that, that matters when you work hard at something to see that, uh, that goodness and that skill set. I mean, you got to talk about it. So just have to focus on creating goodness. Yes. Creating goodness. We're still trying to figure out a fun image for that. We have some other phrases and logo like images form. We don't know how, how do you create an image that expresses the word that goodness? Embodies goodness. Right. Really have to See, have a there's a question. Yes, please. To this, uh, to this podcast. Because yes. I have so many more questions that I want to ask I you. It feels so surface level. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I like surface. I'm good at talking surface level in business. Like, like let me tell you about the practicals. Yeah. But it's fun when you can get deep. We'll definitely have let's do part two. Okay. okay. Right. Definitely a lot of fun questions. I'll tease yeah. that. Like, I want to ask you, like, about your favorite color, but why? Like, obviously, we know oh, yeah. it's yellow, but like, why? why? Hello. What, what's a, a, a piece of art that, like, mm. what's something that you created that, like, has stuck with you that is your favorite? Like, oh, yeah. Let me talk to you and cry over my artwork. Let's do that. Your collage work. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we got really into detail about, like, why collage versus, right. like, other texture. medias. Mm -hmm. Texture. That's, that's, that's texture the right there. There's your two second answer texture. Texture. It's, it's telling stories that, I mean, horse starts, what our vision too is telling a story, letting other people tell their stories. So you tell our stories when you've done our videos, the projects, the classes we do, my artwork, even what Jason does. And when he creates the images are telling um, a story. We think story is so important. The concept of story um, is valuable in your life. And like people need a place to be able to say theirs as well as I'm telling mine. And so with collage, I can tell stories. Um, with the history of my materials, with the image itself. And so art does that. I think art can, it gives you a chance to share. Um, but yeah, I, I could talk about the actual practicalities of my art forever, just because I love it. And that's why I think it's important. We were talking to someone recently about entrepreneurship, like this um, homeschooling group. And Jason says something really important that like, when you're figuring out your career or your job, like anything you're doing, do you have the skill, but also do you have the passion for it? Is this something you love to do? Mm -hmm. Sometimes what you love to do might not always make the money. It might not be the right time, mm -hmm. but like you need to figure out, is there an, a way to love what you're doing? And especially if it's a career that you self-employed that you're creating, like, do you love it? Cause there are going to be days that the things you do for it aren't lovable, like finances or figuring out, you know, how to pay for something uh, for a supply or like it's going to be long hours or things like that. But like, do you still love it? And so we love it. 
this is why we're here. We're like, and why I still do collage. Like you love it. And so I think love is con that it's contagious. And so hopefully that's what people are feeling too from us. So there you go. Love and on love. <laughs> love what you do. All right. I'm going to make the commitment. You got to stop. <laughs>